This is Nick Ravellis, the Geisel Director of Education and Outreach for San Diego Opera. Welcome to the San Diego Opera podcast about the music, the composers, and the personalities involved in our 2012 international season. Okay, gang, let's get right to it. Do you know what you have to bring when you come to the opera more than anything else in your possession? Your ears, yes, that's right. You've got to bring your ears to an opera performance, not just to hear the opera, but really to listen to it. I think most of us know the difference between just plain hearing and truly listening. Hearing is passive. If you listen to something, I think it automatically elicits something of a response, usually an emotional one, but it can also be an intellectual response. That's at the core of what I'm talking about today, and I'm going to use the role of Rosina in The Barber of Seville, our final opera of the 2012 season, as an example. The role of Rosina was first written by Giacchino Rossini for what was then called a contralto, a voice that was definitely in the lower range of female voices, and a voice which, at the time, was often used to portray male characters on stage. Geltruda Righetti Giorgi was the first Rosina, as well as the first Cinderella in Rossini's other great comic masterpiece, La Cenerentola. She was young at the first performance of Barber, in fact just 23 years old, but she was very well thought of as a contralto with stunning virtuosic ability, coloratura passage work, frills and trills that could make the most of the role. Rossini expressly asked for her, and knowing how he and other composers worked at this time, the role was most likely tailored to fit her perfectly. But she was a contralto whose voice went from a low F to a high B flat, and if she was like the other contraltos singing in that period, she had three very distinct registers in her voice. A high voice that was agile and penetrating in sound, a middle voice that was warm and inviting, and a low chest voice that was steely but had a flexible character. When the contralto sang forte or loudly in that low chest voice, you'd have to have a very good ear to tell if it wasn't coming from the upper register of a tenor voice, of a male voice. In fact, if you closed your eyes, that is. Now, with that description in mind, remember the kind of character that Rosina in The Barber of Seville is. She's spunky, lively, take charge. She's the kind of girl who isn't given to a lot of mooning and pining about her state in life. In her opening aria, she tells us that she can be demure and obedient, but if she's crossed, she can become an uncoiled serpent and strike out at the offending man. She sounds a little bit like Norina in Don Pasquale, doesn't she? Well, she's cut from the very same cloth. And this is where you need to bring your ears to the game. The color of the contralto voice is just perfect for the role of Rosina. After all, that's what Rossini wrote her for. The voice has the capability of giving us exciting high notes, rapid coloratura passages, warmth in the middle lyric range, and a lower chest voice that can be cutting, edgy, and a veritable kaleidoscope of different hues. On top of that, the overall sound is one that's oh, dark and dusky, with a touch of danger in it. That's Rosina the character, isn't it? It just fits. If you want to listen to the second half of her aria, Una Voce Poco Fa, the fast section, or cabaletta, with an honest-to-goodness contralto, the Polish singer Eva Podlesz sings the role in this recording. Listen for those exciting highs, the warm and yet lyrical middle, and the chesty low voice. It's all there, and it's all perfectly Rosina. Yeah. 
Yes, that's the Rosina that I have in my head as the perfect example of a voice type fitting an opera character who needs to be brought to life on stage by a good singer. The thing is, the role of Rosina was so admired by everyone that they all wanted to sing her. Many mezzo-sopranos today have the requirements to sing the role, much like a contralto. They may not have all the power the contralto would originally have had in those lower passages, but if they have good coloratura technique and an exciting high register, as well as that nice dark color, then obviously a mezzo can do it. But the controversial thing is that every once in a while, a soprano will take on the role. That will require some transposition of the keys or of the notes because most sopranos don't have that lower register. The voice just doesn't live down there. But light coloratura sopranos like the legendary singers Lily Pont, Roberta Peters, and Beverly Sills often sang the role. It's almost like the sopranos of the world tried to steal the role away from the lower voice types of contraltos and mezzo-sopranos. Now, I'm not saying that a, a soprano can't successfully essay the role of Rosina, and in fact, there are still some sopranos out there who are performing the role and are getting lots and lots of adulation from the public. That's great. If they can do it, terrific. But it's much more of a challenge, I think, and that soprano had better be a terrific actress in order to make up for the perhaps lack of danger, risk, and color edginess that may not be a part of her bag of vocal tricks. I'm Nick Ravellis, and I'll see you at the opera. <laughs>